Yeah. You ready to fight? Yeah. You ready to fight? Yeah. Proved unanimously, unanimously by Mayor Libby Schaaf's uh, commission, his environmental report. And the report is frankly a bunch of bullshit. One of the things the report doesn't deal with is where are the trucks going to go that are at Howard Terminal now? It's a staging ground for trucks. You know where they're going to go? They're going to go in the community. They're going to pollute the community and the environment. That's where those trucks are going to go. But that's not in the report. The other thing that's not in the report is that the effort of the ILW and other unions to clean up the port and to make it a clean facility. They have not really talked about that because the priority is not the environment and the community. The priority is making more money for John Fisher. Now, John Fisher is not only trying to destroy the Port of Oakland by privatization, by selling it off, he also runs the KIPP charter school chain and the rocket ship chain. In fact, Dave Caval is on the board of directors of the rocket ship chain. And what is the rocket ship chain? It's a private, basically so-called nonprofit, which is destroying public schools in Oakland and around the country. And it's a two-tier system, these charter schools. They don't pay the teachers as well, and they don't really protect public education. So we're here today, it's a joint rally around the protection of public education and protection of the longshore jobs, protection of the community in West Oakland. This is a united struggle. And we have to say to the city of Oakland, the Board of Education and the city council, why are you gonna spend $800 million for John Fisher and his billionaire development project when you don't have money to keep the schools open? Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! This is a rich state, it's a rich country, and they have money for a developer, a billionaire, but they don't have money for our schools? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And they want to pit the longshoremen against the Teamsters and others. The longshoremen are a foundation of this community. They built Oakland. They built this country. They fought discrimination, racism, systemic racism. That's what the longshoremen has done. They want to destroy this port. And for those people who don't know, if they build a, a stadium and 3,000 condos and hotels, it will destroy this working port of Oakland. That's what it'll do. And they know that. Where are those trucks going to go? Where are those longshore jobs are going to go? Why should longshoremen have to go to, to Seattle and Los Angeles to work when we have one of the greatest ports in the world right here in Oakland? That's what we're talking about. So this privatization that we're talking about is not just an Oakland problem. The same thing is happening in San Francisco, where they're shutting down schools, where they're privatizing schools and selling off the land, the public land, at City College in San Francisco. It's a struggle here. It's a struggle around this country. We need a national campaign against privatization of public education. We need a national campaign against privatization of education. We need a national campaign against privatization of ports because it's not only the Oakland port that's being privatized. They're privatizing ports all over the country and even in Durban, South Africa, they're privatizing ports. This is an international struggle to defend our ports, to defend our schools, and we say take it forward now. We need candidates, working class candidates, who are say the hell with the billionaires. Our interests are the working people of Oakland, the working people of this country. That's the kind of candidates we need. So our first speaker is Aaron Wright, and Aaron has a few words to say about the privatization of the port. Welcome, Aaron Wright. Good afternoon. I'm with the ILW Local 10. I've worked there for 30 years. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with my brothers and sisters in our union and serve the community. You know, the point I really want to make today is that we are in a fight for our lives. I'm not, I'm not speaking hyperbole here. The infrastructure that we rely on to have one of the most densely populated regions in the state, it, it must survive. Without roads, without power, without schools, you will die. You will slowly wither and die. If this port is impacted, by a condo development, which is really face value what this is. And they take $855 million of Oakland taxpayer money and just 
the other day, Mayor Libby Schaaf said she wanted to put another 500 million. We're talking over a billion dollars, a billion 300 million. And they want to close our schools. They want to cut our schools. They want to, it, you know, Howard Terminal is so important because it is a nexus of truck traffic. It is a nexus of ship traffic. It is a nexus of train traffic. And without that infrastructure, we could starve to death. We are already seeing supply chain issues all over the world from the shutdowns of the pandemic. We are seeing people starve to death all over the world behind this shutdown of our supply chains and the damage it's done. We cannot allow short-sighted politicians to give away all of our tax money to a billionaire. He's got enough, he can pay for it himself. He does not need our money. It's unconscionable, I grew up in this city. It is unconscionable to ask for more than a billion dollars. Haven't we learned from the Raiders? 200 million lost, gave that money away. This is just another mistake on top of that mistake. Let's not do it again. Do not repeat that history. Put that money into the schools of Oakland. Put that money into real affordable housing for the people of this city. Get the homeless off the streets. You know, once you've got your basic needs, then let's talk about playgrounds and let's put them in the right place. Hell, you could, with that kind of money, you could build a stadium and. At, at Coliseum, and you can build an estuary there with a waterfall. You can have trained elephants down there You can, to throw the baseballs for you, okay? That kind of money can do a whole lot, and it's a lot more important to put it into our families, our people, our infrastructure, than a baseball team and a condo development for a rich billionaire. Thank you. And as I said today, this, this rally, this rally is, is not just about the port and the Longshore and the West Oakland, it's about the entire working class. The right of working people to have good public schools. That's what we're talking about. Why in the richest state in the country, we are starving the school teachers. We are starving these kids. And we're starving the community. So our next speaker is Kitty Epstein Kelly, and she's made the connection, she was on KPFA, about the connection between Fisher, Kitty Epstein, Fisher and the, not only the stadium, his development plans, but also the schools. Welcome, Kitty. This is the day that we break through on both of these issues. The people of Oakland already know that these things are wrong. Nobody wants to pay money to a billionaire. Nobody wants our schools closed down. Nobody wants our port wrecked. But there's a reason that this is the day of the breakthrough. And that's because the moral authority of this city has always rested with educators and longshore workers. Yeah. We are the people who speak for justice, and we've been doing this for years. So when the city council and the governor, who actually is in charge of the Oakland schools, hear that the people who work in the schools, the parents, and the longshore workers are against both of these horrible issues, people will come together and stop it. That's what I believe. So one of the things, one of the people who is not hearing loudly enough from us is the governor of the state of California. The governor controls, the governor controls the Oakland schools because they were taken over 20 years ago and never been fully given back. And the governor has facilitated some of these laws that have, are threatening the port. So he needs to hear from us also. But I do believe this is the moment that we're going to begin to win these struggles because we have brought these moral, upstanding uh, preservers of Oakland together. Thank you. Is, how many people know about gridlock? How many people know about gridlock in the Bay Area? You can't even move around now. Now, what does that mean to West Oakland? What does that mean to Oakland, the, the highways? 
If you can't move around now, what's going to happen if they try to build a stadium? It's going to be hellish. Now, John Fisher doesn't live in Oakland. He lives in Pacific Heights. <laughs> so I say build the damn stadium in Pacific Heights. You want a stadium? <laughs> Why are they building in working class communities? That's what we have to ask. Black, brown, working class communities. Why are they building it here instead of in Pacific Heights where the wealthy live? They don't give a damn about the working class. And joining us now is Melody Davis, who's a resident, a retired Coliseum worker. And I want to say one thing about the Coliseum. We're for protecting the jobs of the Coliseum workers. Coliseum workers have a right to have decent jobs and decent wages. So why don't we build a stadium at the Coliseum or rebuild the stadium? And I have to say, those unions, the building trades, Andreas Kluver and the head of the Labor Council, they're taking the bidding of the billionaire, not the people of Oakland. The people of Oakland don't want to spend $800 million on the stadium. Why would they be telling these politicians Labor supports this? Hell no! Hell no! This isn't going to benefit labor. 50% of the construction workers are in Oakland are non-union. Let's organize them. You want jobs. You want union jobs. So welcome, Melody Davis. Good afternoon, you guys. You guys just don't know how I feel right now. I feel damn good. You know why I feel damn good? Cause you guys are out here! Woo! I am so excited! You guys, I've been fighting for the Lower Sherman, uh, a part of the Democratic Club. And we, put, we picked up the fight against Fisher, a billionaire. Little old me. I said, I'll take it. You know why? Cause it don't need to be over there. Not in West Oakland. I live in West Oakland. I don't have a problem with the Oakland A's, you guys. No, let's get that clear. I don't have a problem with the A's. I buried my granddaddy in the A's outfit. Because he took all the grandkids to the A's game. So it's not that, y'all. Let's get that real clear. I'm upset about the MF location. He's squeezing that. He's squeezing that like some ketchup between the train tracks. That's federal. That's President Biden's baby. He's going against the trains. Amtrak is not going to stop for nobody to walk over, over there for a ball game. He, the, the trains are going to continue on. Trust me, number one. Number two, the longshoremen is 24-7, like the trains. 24-7, y'all. While we sleep, they working. And guess what? They unloaded from the ships. And guess what? That's a dangerous MF job. These men and women are putting their life on the line for us to get our toilet tissue, our soap, that's basic needs. And when the pandemic was at its height, they were still working. In y'all. When you and Dad said you had an option, y'all went home and worked. Well, guess what? The Lone Sherman couldn't do that. They were still there. Their life was on the line, y'all. They where they work at is over some water. Come on now. I'm preaching right now. I want y'all to listen. They got a dangerous job over there. Come on now. So my thing is that they put their life with a life for us, you and me, and our stores, Target, Amazon, Prime, all of them. They got something to do with that. Fisher tried to punish them by bringing, I want to say mafia, but I heard I can't use that word. The Teamsters in. Cars. The Teamsters <laughs> in. The bust up the union. I was at that meeting. Jimmy Hoffa. May be dead, but the people are still alive. And they're doing what they do best, union busting. You guys, we can't have that. We can't have that, y'all. We got to speak up, and this is what we need to do. And we'll miss the Fisher ho ho Houses in Pacific Heights. Now, when we was there before, a lot of us, I was the only black one there. 
Police came and then they left. They said, okay, peaceful. Well, guess what? Just like y'all made my day today, I wish we could all go down at the Pacific Heights and let Mr. Fisher know we mean business. Yeah. These are y'all jobs, y'all. Yeah. This is your city. Yeah. Take the Coliseum, put, take Mr. Fisher and put it over there. I have something for you guys to do. The day they go to vote on it, you guys, this is a very important day. This is a very important day. They go to vote. I have something right here. Who got my flyer? Okay, this little thing right here. Help me, young man. Hold it. I want y'all to take this, take a picture of it. I want you guys to get an email to city council. The, the ILWU has a tremendous history of working class solidarity. And in two Juneteenths ago, there were 20,000 people marching from the port to this, uh, the city hall, Oscar Grant Plaza. They were saying, we need justice. We have to fight systemic racism. We have to end the destructive things that are going on in this country and around the world. And the president of the ILWU at that time, Trent Willis, is here to join us. So welcome, Trent. All right, brothers and sisters, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. When I say you're ready to fight, you say damn right. You ready to fight? 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 Now we all know, us members of the ILW, Local 10, and Coastwide, we know what we stand for. We stand for equality. We stand against privatization. We stand against gentrification. Because you know what that equals? You know what those two things equal? A widening of the wealth gap. The wealth gap has been a problem in this country for working people. It's been getting wider and wider and wider. There's an attack in this country on the middle class. And you know where that attack is coming from? It's coming from these billionaires who think they can just come to your city, take your land, take your jobs, and take your money, and go live up high up on the hill somewhere. Are we going to put up with that? No. Is Local 10 going to put up with that? No. When I say union, you say fight. Union. Fight. Union. Fight. When I say people, you say fight. People. Fight. People. Fight. When I say local, you say 10. Local. Ten. Local. Ten. Local. Ten. Ten. Now listen up, brothers and sisters. Listen up. Every generation... Every generation of longshore workers has had their battle. My dad's generation had their battle. My great uncle's generation had their battle. Ever since the 1930s, we've been standing up for the rights of working people. In the Port of Oakland and San Francisco, right here in the Bay Area is where it all started. In 1934, we had a general strike. That general strike was for the right of workers to live and to prosper. It was a battle for the middle class. And in 1934, we won that battle. We will win this battle also. It is no secret who we are. Now any elected official who supports a billionaire over the interests of the citizens that they're supposed to rep represent needs to be out needs to be gone. Any person that represents you on the Labor Council, because the Labor Council is very important, any person that represents you on the Labor Council that's not standing for the rights of workers needs to be gone. Now let me make one thing clear. You have the Mayor of Oakland, Mayor Libby Schaaf, right. The mayor and males, mayors before her have appointed people to the Port Commission, the Oakland Port Commission. Now the ILW Local 10, we've been vying to get on the Port, a member of our, our union on the Port Commission for years. And we've always been denied. Now you are seeing the reason we've been denied. You got people on the Port Commission making decisions 
that is going to make you lose your job. What is more viable for the port? What is more viable for the port? Okay. The port of Oakland is the main artery and the vein that keeps the, this city, surrounding cities, and surrounding counties going. Period. To disrupt that will be detrimental to every man and woman out here today and every man and woman that lives in this city and the surrounding counties. Now, if the pandemic taught us anything, it taught us how important the supply chain is. So we're talking about Howard Terminal. Howard Terminal, the proposed site for this ballpark, right now is getting ready to be used to relieve the congestion of the supply chain. You know why? Because that land is needed for that. It is industrial land. Okay, the industrial land in this city supports good union paying jobs like yours. It supports black and brown people like you. And it's been doing it since the 1930s. There is no way that this generation can afford to let this go to the side. We have to stand up and fight. We have to do it. We owe it to our ancestors. It is no way that anybody, including myself, can sit back and let these decisions be made that affect all of our families. So when I say you're ready to fight, and you say damn right, you got to mean that. When it's time to throw down, you got to show up. Okay, every situation comes to a head. This one is coming to a head now. Okay, and we have to let these elected officials know whether we got to throw them out of here, we got to run candidates against them, we have to organize, and we have to be there when, when our name is called. Okay, there was, a, there was a song by John Mayer. It's called Waiting for the World to Change. We can't afford to wait for the world to change. We have to make it change. So I call on every, each and every person out here today, and especially my ILW brothers and sisters. You have family that have jobs, union jobs, whether they're union or not, that live in this city, that work in this city. It's time to spread the word. It's time to organize. And it's time to organize over the powers that be, okay? Because it's hard to beat the system when you're standing at a distance. Amen. I'm going to say that again. It's hard to beat the system when you're standing at a distance. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? You ready to fight? You ready to fight? All right, right on, brothers and sisters. Power to the people. Thank you, Trent. Now... What are we talking here? It's not just about working longshore workers, men and women, and they'll be speaking. We have some women longshore workers who support their families by jobs on the docks, good paying jobs on the docks. Well, you know, Clarence Thomas, unfortunately, can't be with us. He's in Arizona, but he went to one of these so-called community benefit meetings that John Fisher had, these scam meetings. And you know what they said at that meeting? What their offer was, their community benefit? They were gonna offer peanut franchises to the residents of West Oakland. Peanut franchises. Now what kind of living can you make with the peanut franchise? That's what I want to know. Peanuts. That's exactly right. Peanuts. So before we bring up the Longshore women, there's some teachers here and students. That's who we're fighting for. The students and teachers. So welcome Mose Lopez and the students and teachers are here. If you want to come up now. My name is Mose Lifner and I'm a senior in high school at Oakland School for the Arts. It is a charter school and that is not why I'm here. Why I'm here is to stand with the people of Oakland and the people who are trying to protect Howard Terminal from being gentrified, from being taken advantage of, from being taken by billionaires. Oakland matters. The people of Oakland matter more than anything. Sports teams are important, of course, but the people of Oakland 
do not deserve to be moved out. They don't deserve. The people of Oakland are here to stay. The people who have been taken advantage of by these billionaires are here. We are making a statement. We are here in solidarity with each other. If we aren't here, who's going to be there for Oakland? Thank you. I'm Denise Hefstetler from Parker Elementary. We're here in solidarity with the ILW10. Um, and it's an unfortunate, fortunate day that we had to come together. Um, our site, Parker Elementary, is the one that Oakland Unified decided to shut down without any reason, didn't tell us anything other than when we look at the data, our school is black and brown. Privatization of Oakland has to stop. And today, o OEA members and the Longshoremen are here together. ILWU is a leader in the fight for equality. And they have fought for equal rights for their women members. And we have some of them today. Jakari is the first speaker. Welcome, Jakari. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm a proud, proud member of the ILWU Local 10. I am here to stand for all my brothers and sisters. I'd be damned if the billionaires thinking they're going to come and take our port, our jobs, so they can come and sit and live and take from the low in West Oakland and come over here and build a stadium for the A's, all that money that they're taking to build over there, take it and go do something to the Coliseum. Stay over there. You got a whole park over there. There's nothing wrong with it. Put that money over there. And another thing, I worked for the school district. So you're going to come in, take, close our schools out, put our kids out, and what? So they can end up in jail while you can sit back and talk about them? No, we're not going to do that. So we're going to sit out here, we're going to fight, we're going to call these doors, we're going to yell, we're, we're going to make sure that they do not vote. Because this is what we're here for, to stop them from voting today. I'm standing here with all my Longshore brothers and sisters, teachers, district workers, we all here to fight. They're not going to take our property from us. We're going to stay here. We're going to keep coming down here. We're going to fight, fight, fight until they get tired of us. We're not going to give in. If you give in and allow them to keep voting, it's going to be our bad. So I'm here to say, we're going to continue to come down here and fight, get more people to come down here, because all they're going to do is try to take it away from us. And it's not right, it's not cool, and it's not good. Because all us, workers, students, our kids and our grandkids, it's not going to be good for them. Because if you know, if you live in Oakland, and they take this and close all our schools, your kids can't go to school nowhere, because why? They're going to say, you're not in the district. So if we allow them to take our jobs and close these schools down, it's going to be bad for us and them. Local 10, my brothers and sisters, I love y'all. We're going to keep coming down here. We're going to keep fighting until they give in. If we have to be here sun up to sun down, we're going to be down here. And also Linda is joining us from Local 10. Welcome, Linda. Hello, my brothers and sisters. Let's be clear. This is not about the Oakland A Stadium. This is about prime real estate for a billionaire. He did not become a billionaire by just letting things fall by the wayside. He focused on prime real estate. It is not about the ballpark, people. And I've heard some people say, oh, we need change in Oakland. We need to let them do some things down there at the port. It's not going to compromise us. Guess what? It will. Have you ever heard the saying, you give them an inch, they take a mile? That's where it is going to fall into place. We cannot allow someone else outside of Longshoremen to take any part of the, water, of, of the waterfront. Nothing. That belongs to us. And they talk about jobs. They're going to provide all these jobs. But you're willing to compromise ours. It's about preserving jobs. Where do they do that at? Where do they take jobs to give somebody else a job? Are we going to let them do that? Let's, come on. It's about preserving our jobs. It's not about location. It's not about who run the port. It's obvious. 
We've been on that port since the 30s. And not to talk about the schools, come on. I come from a city, the city of Detroit, where they start closing public schools to bring charters in. And doing my homework on this family, they have charter schools across the United States. This is a profit. You can put a nonprofit on anything. But guess what? They getting paid. So we're going to allow them to close public schools to bring charters in here? Seriously? Hell no. Oakland is not a private city. This is public. And we don't have enough of us out here to be truth be told. We're supposed to be back on Broadway right now. And I'm just keeping it 100. This is unreal. And looking at the, the environmental report in the bogus resolution, so you doctor up something to make it look good, to make it sound good, but you can't stand behind it. This environmental report is gonna compromise the health and safety of not only you, but your family coming behind you. So as a local 10 IOW, you strong woman who support unions, I'm not standing for it. And I think it needs to be more than us out here. If we don't fight for something, we're gonna fall for anything. And just like the people that came before us, this fight, honestly, is not for us. This fight is not for me today. This fight is for those kids coming behind me. We're not fighting for it today. We're fighting for the future of ILWU and our children coming behind us. Martin Luther King didn't fight for himself. He fought for us. He fought for civil rights for us today. So we need to talk more to our, to our ILWU family. All these unions, talk to them. Educate them on what a union is. It's equality. It's unionizing us. It's fighting for something so we don't fall for the bullshit. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Now, yesterday in San Francisco, there was a rally of several hundred city workers in San Francisco. And one of the things that's going on in San Francisco, like in Oakland, is understaffing. They don't want to hire. They got billions of dollars from the federal government during this pandemic. They refuse to hire public workers. What are they doing? They're outsourcing it to nonprofits. Also, they're ethnically cleansing the workforce in San Francisco. They're getting rid of the black and brown workers in San Francisco. They're actually destroying the black and brown working class in San Francisco. They want to do the same thing in Oakland. They want to do the same thing. Hanging nooses have been put up at work locations in San Francisco. They don't do a damn thing about it. They're setting up a two-tier system where these nonprofits are doing public jobs at less wages. And that's part of privatization. So our next speaker is Kim Cox. She's a leader of an activist for black workers in San Francisco. Welcome, Kim. Greetings, everybody. Ashe, first of all, I want to give kudos to our Canadian truckers and those fighting for freedom as we reunite, unite here today. We have to stick together. This is a one thing right now, because right now in San Francisco, as Steve has said, we are fighting for our lives over there, especially the black workers. We're the ones that are being laid off. We're, they're the ones that are privatizing our jobs, as we spoke about yesterday at the rally. But why I'm here today is because of Oakland's situation, having raised two sons here, and I have a granddaughter who's six years old in the school system here. Um, I think it's a travesty that they are trying to close these schools. First of all, we have no grocery stores in most of Oakland. We also have no drug stores. We also are fighting right now with the school system. So what we're doing is we're saying okay to the prison to pipeline, which is something we are fighting right now. Um, we have suffered enough as Oaklanders have suffered. Now they're closing schools and I'm like, are you serious? What happened to promoting education for all? 
in having a free education, a free appropriate education? Do we need to bring back integration into these schools for a free education in our neighboring communities? My parents fought 50 years ago for us to have schools. Now we're closing them? Are you serious? So what I have to say is that these board members need to go right now. They should be up for re-election. So if you go to Pinot, you go to Elsa Brandy, they have schools that look like college campuses. You come to Oakland, which I have privy with my nonprofit, they look like prisons. What's wrong? It's these board members that are doing what they're doing to our school system, and they need to go. And I, lastly, I just want to say to all the board members, you have dragged the school system to the ground, and all, you, all of you need to be fired, because this is on your watch. If you cared, you would think twice about destroying one of the last free institutions here in Oakland. So what I have to say is let freedom ring and let these schools stay open for all and stop the gentrifying once and for all. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dick Becker with Answer. Thank you very much. I'm representing Answer now to stop war and end racism. I'm honored to say that we have worked together with the LW Local 10 for over 20 years. And when Trent says that about the song, Waiting for the World to Change, the ILWU Local 10 has never waited for the world to change. It's been part of making the world change. And I think everyone in ILWU Local 10 should be very proud. And we're here also today in solidarity with the Oakland Education Association and with the parents and with the children of Oakland. You know, everywhere where we see the union and struggle, we see an organization that is fighting not only for its own members, but for the people as a whole, for the working class and the people as a whole. So when we see today the struggle that's going, that are going on here, or the struggles of the teachers in San Francisco, or the struggle of the workers at the Tenderloin Housing Clinic who are providing needed services, vitally needed services, and not getting the assistance that they need. You know, whenever public property is privatized, it represents an act of theft. It's an act of theft from the people. And you know, today we see this, it's just rampant what's happening. What's being taken from us and what has been taken from us. That the schools that used to be everywhere, public schools, and there were no charter schools, none. Hard to believe today, but they didn't exist. There were the public schools. And now we see the attack that goes on, the attack, one act attack after another against the people, against our rights, against our rights to housing, our rights to health care, our rights to a job, our rights to live, as people should all have a right to live. And the only thing that's going to stop it is the struggle of the people. So here today, we take another step forward. We congratulate ILW Local 10. We congratulate the OEA. We congratulate all of those who have been coming out to the board meetings and the demonstrations here opposing this criminal closing of the, of the schools. So none of us are waiting for the world to change. We got to make the world change. Thank you. One of the things that uh, people know, most people I'm sure at this rally, is what happened in 1934. What happened in 1934? There was a general strike in 1934 in San Francisco. And in 1946, there was a general strike right here in Oakland. Right here in Oakland. And what were they striking about? They were striking about the right to have a union hiring hall. The right to have a union. Well, let me tell you this. 
I think we have the right to have jobs and the right to have public education, and that's a general strike issue. People in this country have a right to have a public education. It's being taken away from us. Yeah. It's being taken away from us. If you can strike for a union, you can strike for public education for your kids. Yeah. Those are comparable things. So our next speaker is Jack Heyman, who is a leader and activist and fighter for internationalism. Welcome, Jack. I just want to make the main point we're all here for, which is to send a message to the city council. Yeah. Because what they do today will determine the fate of this city. The Port of Oakland is the economic engine for the entire Bay Area and Northern California. If you start giving it away to billionaires like John Fisher, there'll be nothing left for us. These are good jobs that we're fighting for. And we are going to take a look and see how the vote goes down. We already know where Libby Schaaf stands. The mayor of Oakland is in the pocket of the billionaires. She was an attorney for the Port Commission, which is in the pocket of the billionaires. The city council has to know that this is going to be a defining moment for the city of Oakland. Are you going to gentrify the city of Oakland? and leave thousands of working class people without jobs and homeless. If you're worried about the port now, then start cleaning up and provide housing for the homeless people that are now encamped underneath the freeways going into the port. You need to take a look at other billionaires that have gone into the cities and set up their own stadiums. This is not the first time it's happened. In New York City, there's Barclays Center. They promised the billionaires that built it, they were going to build affordable housing. There is no affordable housing. Doesn't exist. That's the same thing that billionaire Fisher is promising here. So this is a political fight, and we need to pay attention. Go on Zoom after this rally, and let's see what the city council does. I'm saying here today that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are both in the pockets of the billionaires. It's time for the working class to build our own party in this country. It's not too late. If the city council votes with the billionaire, that's the sign for us to begin building our own workers' party here in the United States. Yeah. They have workers' parties around the world. Why don't we have one in this country? Thank you. So our next speaker is Ed Ferris. He is a longshoreman, and uh, he's going to talk about some of the struggles that we face. Welcome, Ed. All right, family. Uh, my name's Ed Ferris, 9344, proud member of Local 10. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today. This is important, and we need to pay attention to what's going on here because I see a lot of parallels to what I saw in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In the 1970s, there were a lot of great union jobs that allowed families, you know, to have lives in dignity. And unfortunately, uh, those jobs went away. And it's all because of corporate greed and corporate profit. They like to blame the worker instead of who is actually at fault, and that's the elite class. Because this trickle-down economic shit, it doesn't work. All it does is cause more misery. So, Local 10, this job that I've had uh, since 1998 has been a gift. It's like hitting the lottery. My wife was able to stay at home and raise our daughter who had some special needs. Now my daughter's graduated from UC Davis. That's what this union was able to do. And it just sickens me that we're even having to guilt our elected officials who we have supported in the, fat, in the past, Libby. And it seems like they just ignore, you know, organized labor. We're, we're the brunt of all problems. Just get on the news. Oh, the supply chain, the supply chain. It's all the longshoremen's fault that you can't get your shit off of Amazon. Well, guess what? It's not. We don't do anything but provide the best labor for unloading cargo. That's what we do. 
okay? We don't put in the orders to work 24-7. That's the employers. Folks over there, PMA, I know you're watching and listening too. And we got a negotiation that's gonna be coming up this summer. And we should be unapologetic for having jobs with dignity. We should encourage more of that. Because what happens when we don't deal with society's problems? Crime goes up, misery goes up, poverty. You got this homeless crisis. Why don't you put $800 million into that? Anyway, I just really think that we all have to get back to the basics that we learned in kindergarten, that's to share. There's not enough going around for everybody. There doesn't need to be this misery, and let's get it on. Thank you. And it's not just ILW Local 10, there's ILW Local 75, they're Sailors Union of the Pacific and other unions. So welcome Jeremiah from ILW Local 75. I've been an ILW member for 20 years. That's right. Okay, listen up. I'm a commissioner for the, hello, can you hear me? Listen up, I'm a commissioner for the city of Albany. Also, Social and Economic Justice Commission. For the past two years, I represented my union as a executive board, safety committee, and NCDC rep. What's happening here is definitely not social and economic justice. That's for sure, the homeless crisis. Now listen up, have you been to Mexico City? This Coliseum can't be built. It won't be built. It's a trap, it's a death trap. You got Snitzer Steel next door. Heavy metals, toxic to your lungs. The first game, the whole stadium's gonna be filled with heavy metals. Everybody's gonna get cancer. Millions of lawsuits. This stadium can't be built, it won't be built. There's a hunger strike going on. There are two teachers who are on hunger strike. And what are they on hunger strike? For the right to a public education. The right to a public education. Why do you have to have a hunger strike to have a public education? In this country, in this wealthy country? That is where we're at in this country. That you have to have a hunger strike. And one of the supporters of the hunger strike and speaking for them is Kira Allen. Welcome, Kira Allen. Thank you so much. I want to uplift the names of Moses Amalade and Andre Mixenche, who are on day 17 of a hunger strike. And they are resolute. They are resolute that they will not eat until Oakland Unified takes back these school closures or until they die. And they're already at the point where they're having lifelong health issue complications, potential lifelong complications. And so here's what I want to say. The Oakland Unified School District, unbeknownst to us, has been playing a long game. For 20 years, they've been closing public schools to make more and more charter schools. They are playing, on, they are using a playbook put out by an organization called Broad about how to decimate the public school system, about how to decimate black and brown neighborhoods, and we have to put a stop to it. Oakland, the home of the Black Panthers, is the place where this shit has to stop. Yeah. Whose schools? schools? Whose schools? Whose schools? Thank you. I want to say one more thing. Um, the hunger strikers are at Westlake School. They're there 24 seven right now. One of the real dangers is that they have threatened to send EMS to remove them from school property, public property. Um, so we've been having night shifts of people, just bodies on the ground. You can follow them at hunger strike for Oakland schools on Instagram. Blow that up, blow up. Gavin Newsom, Gavin Newsom can in fact override these school closures. He can pay off Oakland's debt that we were saddled with and we have been doing everything we know how. So someone said, how can we help? And I wanted to tell you, this is how you can help. Show up and show out and blow up Gavin Newsom until he overrides these horrible closures. We have another teacher who's joining us, Nick Palmquist. This is a beautiful sight. It is beautiful to see so many folks out here, to see the port, the longshore workers, and the teachers, the students, and the parents united. 
This is exactly what we need. We need to unite and fight because I know that we cannot win this on our own. And I'm speaking as a teacher, we need the solidarity of everybody that's here. Um, I'm a history teacher. I want to appreciate the history lesson I'm getting today. I've been hearing a lot about how the port has established Oakland and the working class and the middle class jobs that need to thrive here. And without the port, those will not be here. And it's the same for the schools. What we've seen in the past 20 years is an attack on our schools. We've lost tons of our schools. We have the highest proportion of charter schools of a whole state in Oakland right now. And that is not by chance and that is a danger because what it means is it's going to erode the public school system here. And I'm connecting that because what I'm hearing is y'all are about to learn, lose Howard Terminal if they go through with this. And I know we're not going to let that happen. No. But that's just the start. Somebody said you give them an inch, they take a mile. We need to be careful. We need to draw a line here and now. We must stop this. We must stop the privatization of our port. We must stop the privatization of our schools. Yeah. If we don't stop it here, there is a good chance that we will not be able to stop it after this. So we must stand strong. We must stand united. Um, I want to invite any Longshore, y'all can welcome at our, our uh, union meetings and vice versa. We would love to come to yours. We need to start planning together. The teachers currently are planning and organizing for a rolling strike through our schools. And we need to keep the pressure on, start escalating our activity, and be ready to shut it down if we need to. So with that, I love y'all, appreciate y'all, unite and fight, we win! One of the things that these politicians speak for is the billionaires. They speak for them. That's why Fisher got the politicians in, in, in Oakland and Alameda County, Nancy Skinner and Rob Bonta, to pass a bill in the state legislature allowing them to take over the port, which are tied lands, and allowing them to get public money. Now, if they can pass a bill for a billionaire, why can't they pass a bill to keep the schools open? That's what I want to know. California has a 50, 60, what is it, 50, 46.7 billion dollar surplus. 46.7 billion dollar surplus. Now that's a hell of a lot of money. That's a hell of a lot of money. Why isn't it going to the schools in Oakland? Why isn't it going for public housing for the thousands of people who are homeless in Oakland and Los Angeles and San Francisco? That's what I want to know. And the reason is, is that these billionaires run the state legislature. They run the U.S. government. Amazon, Bezos, the billionaires in California are doing quite well, thank you, but they want more. They want more. Amazon wants more. In fact, Amazon wants part of the Port of Oakland. They have a 10-year contract with the Zim line, the Zionist line, to bring in cargo to Oakland. So who's doing the bidding of them? The politicians, the Port Commission, the mayor of Oakland. We're saying enough is enough. We have to unite workers, including the truckers in Oakland, because the truckers will be destroyed as, as well. Our next speaker is Edward Escobar for the Alliance of Independent Workers. Well, People before profits. People before profits. People before profits. People before profits. My name is Edward Escobar. I'm the founder of the Alliance for Independent Workers, but we're also here on behalf of poor truckers nationwide. The poor truckers are going to be pushed into poverty. This is a job killer, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot allow this to happen. This privatization is at the core of all these problems that are happening, not just here, nationally, internationally. It's a global issue, austerity movement, where they are giving us less and charging us more. They are squeezing us out of existence, people. We have to put a stop to this. United, we stand. United, we stand. United, we stand. United, we stand. We can stand together as we're here today, but we have to continue this push moving forward. The hashtag Drivers Unite movement that we've founded, that is significant. We push against the billionaires, against the Ubers, the Lyfts, the, the DoorDash, the Postmates, the Instacarts. 
These are the multi-billion dollars that uh, uh, billionaires that have made more and more billions during the pandemic while everyone else suffered. They made more. We made less and less. They are squeezing us out of existence. Is that acceptable, people? Yeah. No. Hell no. That's got to go. Hell no. That's got to go. Hell no. That's got to go. The old. So solidarity is a solution, ladies and gentlemen. Solidarity. So si se puede, yes we can. Si se puede, yes we can. Si se puede, yes we can. Our next speaker is John Hughes. Welcome, John. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This occasion that we're gathering for, we have to keep in mind what the whole project is. We're, we keep hearing about a stadium. But you have to understand that John Fisher is not a stadium hoarder. He's a real estate mogul. What John Fisher wants to do is not only build a stadium, but hiding behind it are waterfront condos. So now, if we build waterfront condos, and I'm speaking as though this is what he would say, I can now rent it to all of my friends, which now, guess what? It moves out all of the people of Oakland who helped build this great nation. And it also removes a job that has been here for decades, for centuries. So what he wants to do is he wants to remove a job that has a, a, a permanent employment with benefits for its workers to replace it with temporary work and then multi-million dollar condos for people who don't quite look like us. That's not what we're uh, 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 gonna allow to happen. And excuse me, I'm kind of nervous because it's a lot of people. But check this out. Understand, and I'm going to speak from the dock workers' point of view, the longshore point of view. Our job not only provides income to the people and goods to the public, but it also gives us benefits to our families. So a little personal history. I, I am a prostate cancer survivor. Almost two years ago, I had to have surgery to remove my prostate because they found cancer on it. Had it not been for my benefits, I could not have afforded that. Yes, we may get good pay, but it is not enough to afford not only the surgery, but to pay the anesthesia, anesthesiologist and to pay the hospital. My wife and I would have had to hop more than the house. We probably would have had to throw the kids in there too. See, but this is what they don't understand, that a permanent job that gives us, provides us permanent benefits, not only for me, but for my 16-year-old son, who actually is a junior and will graduate high school at 17, that affords him to go to the private school as well as my daughter, but it also allows us to have benefits. Eye care, ear care, dental care, health care. If we take and we remove this port, if we allow them to build the waterfront condos, if we allow them to privatize this, they push not only myself, but 3,400 other members out of a job. Then they also take and they regentrify the community. Yes, they're fixing it up now, but look at the bigger picture. They're moving everybody else out. And next thing you know, we have the dot comers, we have the, the Amazon people. They're all coming in here and they raise up the prices so high that we can't afford to live here. That's what this is all about. This is about money. So what we need to understand, not only are we saying no on the stadium, not only are we saying no, we don't need waterfront condos on the dock, we're saying no, we don't need to replace permanent jobs that have been a part of this community for my 31 years here. We're also saying they do not need to privatize education. The reason why OUSD has been slipping is because John Fisher has been buying up all these schools that have been depleted by OUSD in this misappropriation of funds. Now I'm gonna say it like this, the clowns that are running the circus are the cause why these things are being sold. So the more schools he can purchase, guess what? 
the less he can have to say no from the OUSD. Because remember, they were trying to build it over there by Peralta. When the school district said no, it halted that project. So now they had to move. That's how powerful OUSD is. And I call out John Sasaki, who stands there and wants to be the spokesperson, but have not spoke up for the teachers. Because if it had not been for the teachers, half of us here that went to public school would not be able to stand here and say that we went to college and we graduated. Why? Because of our early education in our childhood. That's another thing that needs to be addressed. So in wrapping up, it's what we have to remember is that no, we will not stand for it. But understand this. A fist is only as powerful as the rest of the fingers. And together, if we make a mighty fist, we can deal them such a blow. But today, Oakland City Council, you must vote no on this matter to preserve Oakland and its rights. Thank you, John. And another important role of the ILWU, unlike most unions in this country, is a fight for political prisoners, working class, Mumia Abu Jamal, the action of the ILW took, the only union action in the United States that was taken, work action, was bun by the ILWU against the jailing, imprisonment of him, and the attack and murder of Oscar Grant. This is a union that these capitalists and billionaires want to destroy. They don't want these political strikes. They don't want strikes against wars. That's out of order. That's out of order. So our next speaker is Bob Mandel, who's a, a retired teacher and, uh, and a tra also in the schools, and he's been fighting for Mumbia Abu Jamal as well. Welcome, Bob Mandel. Thank you. And not quite retired. I teach in Richmond now because they shut the Oakland uh, adult program with 35,000 students down. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the history of cooperation between the OEA and the ILWU. Because right now, the two unions acting together, striking together, shutting the port down and shutting the school system down, has the power to respond to the social crisis that the billionaires are bringing on us. And that is the only thing that has the social power. So as the OEA prepares, we hope, for its strike, it needs to reach out to ILWU, and ILWU needs to prepare to shut the port down as long as necessary. Woo! Now, I want to talk, Jack, turn this. So, in 1999, the teachers did a teach-in on Mia and the death penalty and it broke an international, a, excuse me, a New York Times blackout on the case, and it made international news. A month later, Rage Against the Machine held a concert just outside of Philadelphia that the police attacked because it was demanding freedom from media. In April, the longshoremen that same year, thank you, but my hand shake. So, thank you. All right. In April of that year, longshore shut down the entire coast for Mumia's freedom. Okay. In 2003, Jack, correct me if I'm wrong, when the Oakland police shot anti-war demonstrators on the docks for protesting the bogus, false, imperialist war on Iraq. Teachers were on the docks that morning. And in 2007, the OEA came down and picketed at the SSA 
terminal because as that say, it was the largest shipper of U.S. warm arms in the world. And we said money for schools, not money for war. And the longshoremen honored our picket lines. In 2014, the Fraternal Order of Police, so-called, we know what the police do in this society. They murder. They uphold capitalist law and order. In 2014, the Fraternal Order of the Police, working with Fox News, demanded that teacher-authored curriculum be removed from the district website. Why? Because one of the members of our crowd today, Craig Gordon, had written a lesson for his students comparing the suppression of Martin Luther King's later writings when Martin Luther King said, it is time to consider democratic socialism to replace capitalism. The lesson compared the suppression of Martin Luther King's writings and the suppression of Mumia's writings. And we fought for nine months and Finally, through Jack and others, the ILWU stepped in, Alice Walker stepped in, and the school board suddenly found religion, and suddenly it was reinstated. There is a long history. When Colin Kaepernick came out from his freedom, something that none of us have seen on TV, none of us have seen reported in the Chronicle or the San Jose Mercury News or anywhere, both unions demanded that the video be broadcast. So there is a common interest here. There is a common history here. And there is a power. I cannot underemphasize that. If the schools get shut down, bringing the students with us, because of course they're going to come with us. It's their future, right? And shutting the poor town, which has enormous power, we can defeat this attack. Thank you. So a couple of things. At 4.30, the students and teachers are going to be rallying at the state building. And they're going to be there demanding money from the state, the wealthy state, uh, run by Newsom and a supermajority. The Democratic Party, the legislature, has a supermajority. What does a supermajority mean? It means they could pass a bill to tax the billionaires to pay for the schools. It means that they make it free to go to UC, CSU system and all community colleges. That's what it means. It means we could have health care for all in California. That's what it means. So the state of California has the money to have health care for all, but they don't want to do it. Why? Because Newsom is taking money from Kaiser and Blue Shield and these private companies. That's who he's taking bidding from. We have to get rid of private health care and have health care for all in this country. Yeah. Kaiser workers were just on strike. Unfortunately, the strike was defeated, the engineer's strike. And the NUHW is in struggle against Kaiser. Kaiser has a $40 billion surplus, and they're screwing the workers and us, the users of Kaiser, because they want to make profit. They want to make more money. That is what capitalism is about. It's not about taking care of you and I, about people. It's about making more profit. That's what we're talking about. So I've been asked to say if you want to get this uh, city council to reject this, uh, you should email the city of Oakland no on the EIR. You can email them and ask them no. So we're going to have a song, brothers and sisters. We have a, 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 a teacher, a postal retired postal worker. So welcome, Jimmy Kelly. This is a song you all should know. And this is the message we need to send. It's which side are you on? Which side are you on? So when I say which side are you on, sing with me. Which side are you on? 
Which side are you on? They say in Alameda County, there are no neutrals here. You're either with the unions or the billionaires and better beware. I say, which side are you on? 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 I say to the city council, the words of the workers you should hear. We're standing up for each other, and the future you better beware. Cause, which side are you on? 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 Long shore, can you stand it? Teachers, yes you can. Cause when we stand together, we get a union stand. I say, which side are you on? 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 So all you fellow workers, good news to you I tell. Cause we get together with unions, we're gonna give the city council hell. Say, which side are you on? 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 Thank you. We need music. We need culture. We need art. You know, in San Francisco, I was involved in a struggle at the Martin Luther King Middle School where, guess what, they had a principal that they brought in who wanted to corporatize it. The first thing they did, it was a black school, is to shut down the music program, to shut down the arts program, and then give away the band instruments. Now what is that for young people in the communities, to give away the band instruments and close the art classes and music classes? That's an attack on the working class. Our next speaker, Ishmael Amandas, he's first vice president of the Oakland Education Association. Hello everybody. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Oakland Education Association and I want to uh, stand in solidarity uh, on behalf of our nearly 3,000 members. Um, as many of you know, we're facing very similar issues as our longshoremen. Privatization in our city has taken a hold. And as, as we, as us as labor, we have a moral imperative to push back on privatization because what it's doing is it's harming our communities. In our schools, we know that as the schools started to privatize, our black and brown students, particularly our black students, have felt the worst effects of the of the policies. We are closing almost 15 schools since 2016 and they're set to close another 15 schools. You're facing a similar issue with the privatization of the port and the loss of jobs and the, loss, and the effect that it will have on black workers and workers of color and so I just come here to send our um, solidarity. We're with you um, and we're going to fight this fight together. Thank you. Another thing that we have to bring up today, what is all the news about right now, nationally? It's not about shutdown of schools. It's not about the homeless in this country. They could care less. They could care less about the homeless in this country because they make money off the homeless. They make money off of slave labor. What they're talking about is war. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. Let's build up more military. Let's surround China. Let's surround Russia. That's what the people who run this country are talking about. So they have billions and trillions for war, but they don't have enough for the people in this country. Whoa. That's really what's going on. Because there is a war, but our enemy is not abroad. Our enemy are not the Russians or the Chinese or the Iranians. Our enemies are at home. They're the people running this country. That's where our enemies are. The wealth in California, let's be clear. This is the wealthiest state in the United States, but they don't have money to keep schools. They don't have money for public services. They don't have money for health care, but they have money for war. The priorities are screwed up, and that's one of the reasons we need a labor party in this country. We need a real workers' party that will represent the working class. And I'm going to invite next a brother who drove up all the way from Los Angeles, who's a transit worker with the international group, and he's been fighting as well in Los Angeles, because this is a statewide struggle it's an international struggle. So welcome Joe Wagner of the International Group. We need a revolutionary workers party. 
Malcolm X said, we put the Democrats first and they put us last. We don't have to be chumps anymore. We need a fighting revolutionary workers party. Now, in Los Angeles, the, the last mayor before this current one was Villaraigosa. Villaraigosa started as a social justice warrior and a union activist and stuff like that. He got bought out by Mayor Bloomberg's money. Uh, you know, Bloomberg's billions, right? He got bought off. So this labor movement that so many people take for granted was not built upon looking for saviors within the ruling class. It was built on solidarity and class struggle. So we don't need social justice unionism. What we need is class struggle unionism that is based on the principle of independence of labor from the capitalists, political parties, and their state. Cops should be out of the unions and we should organize the undocumented workers. This union, Local 10, was built on immigrant and black labor against the capitalist class and it had to be built on solidarity. Wasn't built on looking for saviors on a white horse within the ruling class, okay? It was built against those folks. So what's going on is not, uh, what's going on in Puerto Rico, what's going on in Oaxaca, what's going on in Oakland is a fight against capitalist austerity and privatization. They are cutting the gains of the Civil War. Yeah, that's right. Public education was gained through a civil war, a bloody civil war that smashed slavery and said all people deserve a public education. That was one of the gains and benefits of the civil war, which was a revolutionary war, far more revolutionary than the slave masters revolt against England. It was an actual social revolution and that's what we need again. We need to continue the fight against capitalist austerity by building a revolutionary workers party, taking it to the boss class and not trying to beg them for justice. We're not going to find justice within capitalism. Only revolution can bring justice. And here in the cities, the capitalist democratic party is the main obstacle and labor's ties to that main obstacle is the chief break on progress. Get with the internationalist group and let's talk about revolutionary strategy. Thank you. One of the things that we are, have to fight for is we're talking about the homeless and the struggle of the homeless and young people. And joining us is a group of young people, organizers, and a KPFA person as well. And I want to ask you, join KPFA. For, you, for those of you out there, it's an important station that we all have to support. I have my differences with some of the management at KPFA, but you should join KPFA if you can, because we need this to be live on KPFA. Yeah. We need this to be live. Yeah. We need to get this all over this country so people hear it. So we have to fight for that at KPFA. And you can fight for it by joining and saying we yet to have to have the voices out. We have to have live programming so the people of this country, the people of San Francisco and Oakland can hear this. Yeah, but poverty spell and that houseless mama, that houseless daughter, all those people you don't want to see never want to be look away from me. What you want to do arrest me? We're in your city. See that houseless mom and daughter sleeping in a tent? That's because we don't got money for the rent. So yeah, we standing here as poor and indigenous and black and brown people who have been intentionally destroyed in this stolen land. And I would like everybody love and respect to all the badass workers by the ALWU and all the warriors who continue to not Get down with what I call capitalism. Yes, I did say. But could I ask you to also love into Mama Earth? And if you can, and only if you can, can we hold Mama Earth and recognize that we're on stolen Ohlone Lashon land right now? That this kind of theft and colonial terror didn't start with the destruction of our schools. It didn't start with what I call gentrification. It started with
with the removal of the first people so if we can take a moment of silence and say thank you to the Ohlone Lashan Nation for without whom there be no us who allows us to be on this stolen land and are still here 529 years later shout out to Karina Gold to Deja to all the warriors to our young man Kai who is a grandson of Karina and to all the indigenous and black and brown people who die on these stolen streets and to all the workers who've died behind these crapulous corporate lies of profit and to our brothers and sisters who are now going to be intentionally incarcerated because we can't be educated. Oh, Mateo, thank you. And I want to just uh, recognize I'm standing here with a family of warriors. Nice to come on up. These are all the poor magazine, hopefulness, that's a homeless people solution to homelessness that we're building in Deep East New Chin right now. That's Oakland. That this city is blocking us poor and houseless people from finishing a homeless people solution to homelessness. Yeah, we're media producers like Brother Steve said, and we're also land liberators. So I want to ask any of our youth scholars from Decolonize Academy to tell you what that liberation school is. Go ahead, Amin Ra. If y'all could say with me, we need our schools. We, we need, need our schools. schools. We, we need, need our schools. schools. We need our schools. We need our schools. Go. Go. Yeah, so just to follow up, uh, Decolonize Academy is a school that's auntie and uncle led that is created for students who aren't able to survive in the public school system. Students who are put in detention and uh, in school suspension for different reasons such as disabilities and ways that aren't able to conform to the public school narrative to the public school uh, curriculum. So we create a curriculum that is based around our students, not about, around a formula that's designed to uh, crank out a certain number of people who are supposed to succeed. And we are all here in support of all of the schools that are being shut down unjustly. And we want to know that we are all blessed because we have the school and invite anyone who can to support all of these schools as well as check out the Colonize Academy. Thank you so much. Um, like my brother Tibu said, hopefulness is about like uh, a liberation school. People are coming together. It don't matter what race you is. It don't matter who you are. If you in poverty or you high class, we just want to come together and and change this world because we in dark times and it's evil times right now. Oh. So hopefully you could tap in with hopefulness and decolonize academy. Thank you. Oh, we give a round of applause to these youth scholars. I want to say Poor People's Radio. Slaver Bowl Radio with Gerald Smith and Tiborcio. Poor People's Radio is on PNNKXU. And yeah, we love KPFA, but we also love our own liberation airwaves. Love you, everybody. Thank you. Just want to say that not only are we revolutionaries, but we are love-illusionaries. We take the R-E-V off and we replace it with the L-O-V-E. This is something that will continue to help us to stay meshed together as we operate on the front line and invisibly because it's going to take the prayers and the physical steps of all of us to come together to fight these low vibrations. The school district may not always have been the place to help assist our children or the parents, but we do know that there is an alternative and the alternative would be for us to educate ourselves and to make sure that we heal in non-traditional ways with the demands that we're going forward with, with making sure that we are not pipelining our children from prison to school and from school to prison. So let's do what we can. And today on KEXU 96.1 FM LP Low Power, I personally invite all of you guys to come be, and tell your stories and speak out. A lot of times we don't have a, a safe space to speak and we have to be monitored. So come where you won't be monitored and you have a safe space. Six and we will continue 6 at 6 o'clock today. What's the address? 832 MacArthur Boulevard. All right. All right.
Thank you, brothers and sisters. Okay, well, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning of uniting the longshore workers, uniting the teachers, uniting all workers in Oakland, in San Francisco, and around this country to stop union busting, to stop the privatization. Let's unite this entire working class. And they want to fight. They'll get a fight, brothers and sisters. Solidarity.